This is the GameCube that I've owned for... Oh, how long has it been? Four years? Five years? About... Well, it might have been longer than that. At least five. Maybe six. Um, got it from a friend back in the day who had already replaced it with a new one because this one was not operating anymore. Uh, it, he just played it so much that the uh, laser on it was just completely worn out. So he gave it to me and I tried to readjust the laser on it but it just would not come back. So I ended up purchasing a uh, new laser unit on the internet. I don't remember if it was from eBay or what. Slapped that in there and adjusted it and it works fine. And it's been working fine for a long time. It's my main GameCube. Uh, interesting thing to note is the color of it. Um, if you... Something that one should know about plastic is that it turns yellow. Well, uh, you know, uh, old white consoles would turn yellow over time, but it doesn't matter what color the plastic is. If you look at this, you can tell that one one part of it, the main upper shell, has uh, turned a different color than the rest of it, which is kind of weird. So I can happen to colored plastic too. It just doesn't look the same. But anyway, uh, so this has been my standby unit for a long time. And I had bought a uh, Zeno GC mod chip for it probably two or three years ago. And just never installed it. I didn't really care that much. But about a month ago, I uh, remembered that I had never installed it and decided to uh, slap it in there and see what happened. So I installed the mod chip. Uh, something went wrong and I appeared to have broken the uh, controller board, the drive controller board, somehow. So I took the mod chip off, it still didn't work. Uh, ended up uh, getting a replacement controller board off of the forums. Uh, and now it's back in action. And I ended up installing the mod chip a second time. Uh, and this time it works. So, um, I also did a... There's a couple other mods to this. One of which I did today when I reinstalled that mod chip. And the other one which has been there for a while. Uh, which you may remember from one of my old videos is this uh, region switch. That'll switch it from English or American NTSEU to NTSCJ Japanese with the flick of the switch. Um, the second mod that I did today is this. I wanted to have it in green because I like green. I've also got a Nintendo 64 that I changed the LED on to green. Uh, let's see. Put this over here. I will show you the uh, mod chip on here. It's really simple. Actually, it's it's actually a pretty difficult solder job, even though it's wi it's uh, wireless. It goes right there. It just solders directly onto the board, um, and it's got some holes in the in the chip that you attach the or that you use to solder to points on the back of the drive controller board. Um, and it's, it's, I would say it's not as easy as it seems. Um, I think it would actually be easier to use wires, at least safer, for a novice. I considered wiring this one up, but uh, gave, gave the uh, surface mount a shot, and it seemed to, seemed to work fine, so. Um, on the old Zeno chips, the Model 1s, the version 1s, they, uh, let's see if I can show you. They all have an LED on the chip itself. Let's take, 
take this apart. Just ripping it apart in front of you. Uh, that t lets you know when things are operating correctly. And let me see if I can show you that. When, uh, when you have a version 1 chip, it's a uh, red LED as it's flashing or patching the uh, drive as it boots up. Dang it, I can't do this with one hand. Uh, and then it turns green. And on these version 2 chips, it's red and then it turns amber, like an orange. So if you look down in here, it's red as the GameCube boots up. And then it turns orange. That means the uh, drive is patched, and it'll boot whatever. So, put this back how it was. I had this all plugged in, ready to go, knowing that I would only have one hand to work with. But, Get this back in. I will show you that it does in fact work with uh, oops. with a burnt game. This is a I just downloaded this really quick. It's a trial version of Resident Evil 4 with the debug menus uh, enabled. Uh, I'll shut this off. How am I going to do this with one hand? Gotta hold this door down. I, I'm gonna, I need to buy a new uh, upper case so that I can fit a full-size DVD because I don't feel like buying mini DVDs, but I might buy a pack of them. I don't know. So for now, I have to hold the uh, door close thing, which is kind of weird. Hopefully I can hold it right. There you go. Resident Evil 4 debug. Uh, let me sit hit start over here. Maybe. Oh, I don't have the controller plugged in. Oh no. Start. There we go. Maybe. Takes a little bit to load. For some reason, it might be this disc. I don't think I did a very good job burning it. Uh, I burned it way too fast, but I didn't run a reburn it. There it goes. Anyway, so it works. Mod chips operational, which is good. Let go of that. Disc cover is open. Anyway, but that's it. Um, pro tip: when you're putting a GameCube back together, it helps to open the tray before you put it on uh, just because of the way that the switch mechanism works sometimes you can get it stuck uh, get the tray stuck closed uh, I can't do this with one hand oh I got a text message you can get the tray stuck closed because it gets on the other side of the switch, but anyway. So, oops. Oops. What the hell? There it goes. So that's my GameCube. It's good to have it back. I'm going to try and finish Super Mario Sunshine since I never did that in the past. So, until next time, thanks for watching.